point is about canola, winter canola is rape seed with less than 2% erucic acid, which the FDA deems it edible oil. So that's what you see, for most of you, you see on the shelf canola oil, but it's used for a lot of other things, okay? So with this trans fat situation, no trans fats, can the, some of these sunflower oils and canola oils are getting to be very valuable items in dietary uh, use, whether it be french fries fried in it at McDonald's, whether it be at home, okay, or recipes that you see are going to canola oil because it's such an excellent edible oil. All right, you get about two and a half gallons for a bushel of canola. So every bushel you make, you get about two and a half gallons of edible oil, all right? And you can see what kind of seed we're looking at. If those of you haven't seen it, uh, it's a little bit bigger than that. It's usually blue now because it's seed coated with a fungicide and insecticide. Uh, which is for planting for our purposes is an excellent, but that's what you're selling. And there's about 100,000 seeds per pound, so five pounds is, you know, 500,000 seeds. Meal is a tremendous thing other than oil, very high meal, very high quality dairy meal. We've got a lot of markets down here in Oklahoma and Texas that we ship down meal to meet those needs. Now, you can't, it's a blending meal. You know, it's so high in protein and everything that you've got to blend it off with some other things to go from 34% down to uh, other things. Large plants sometimes, broadleaf, tap root, okay, instead of wheat, which is fibrous roots. Why canola? Why are we promoting this project that we started in actually in the fall 2002, which we now have come a long way. Cleaner for weedy wheat fields. Okay, it's a broadleaf. You plant about the same time you do wheat. You harvest it about the same time you do wheat. You can go in there with Roundup. We've got Roundup ready canola varieties. We've got, every, we've got short varieties maturity wise. We've got longer maturity varieties. We've got low pH varieties now. We've got cert tolerant varieties, which, if you're worried about SU carryover from your wheat into your canola, planting that next fall. There, there's some choices there. We've got a tremendous amount of choices. New equipment. Don't need new equipment, really, um, except maybe a swather. We've got a lot of guys going to swathers and picking it up. We've got delivery points in the state for crushers now, which is a tremendous option. They have act of God contracts for what you produce. Basically, you take them what you make. If you don't make it, you don't take it. You don't owe them any money. You don't have to go buy canola somewhere to feed a contract that you just made, okay? Provides that broadleaf location, Produ uh, production education available. That's what you're here for today, and, and Heath and I and, and Josh Bichong, who's in another room with Dr. Peeper, you'll meet him a little later. That's what we're there for. Hey, you guys know that our wheat is getting to be so trashy. Now, this is me talking personally, that we're about to the point nobody wants it. It has to be clean, okay? And the dockage, a lot of you guys know what it was last year. It's going to continue to be that way. So if you go with Roundup Ready something, a rotation, which winter, broadleaf, lets you take out those grasses, and it doesn't eliminate your problem, but it puts you back in the ballgame and brings your dockage way down. Okay, so if you can do that ever one year out of three or one year out of four in a, in a rotation, just rotate a third of your acres or a fourth of your wheat acres around and, and start getting your fields back and getting your dockage down. Because I guarantee you, some of you, there's some guys that didn't sell their wheat this last year. And if they would have held the, the dockage, some of them, more of you wouldn't have held it, wouldn't have sold it. Okay, so we got issues. That's not the only way to address it, but this is one way. This is just to give you an idea. This is canola on the right, planted 10 acres planted in a field of wheat, which is obviously full of rye, uh, rye. Rye just eats our lunch. Okay, the next year, yeah, we had a few rye plants out there on the right, but the other looked just like it did. And, uh, you know, you guys just can't sell that kind of stuff. 
you don't plant it like you do wheat. Most wheat, you got a sweep going right in front of the drill. Okay? Most, a, lot of, a lot of times there's a sweep gone in front of the drill or is going currently in front of the drill. You don't want to do that. You need a firm seed bed. You basically can plant with anything you want. The box drills, the air seeders, the older, bo the older drills. We, we've been successful with all of them if you have some, have some basic knowledge of what you're trying to do. Here's a, is something that we slow down when you plant canola. You want to be successful, slow down, okay? And I can't make that point any. Here's it. Here's plants per foot of row, okay, at four miles an hour. And look what happens as you go four and a half, five, five and a half, six, and seven. Uh, it, it likes good soil. This is the optimum thing, six to seven pH. It'll grow down to 5.5. Five. Uh, we've got some new ones coming. Oh, look at those. These are the new varieties that are available. Let me get back so I can see them. Most of you have not seen these Citro, Bisbee, and Baller. They're hybrids. Uh, maturities, we've got a lot of different maturities. And whether SU tolerant or not, and uh, pH tolerance. Um, you may see more of those. Most of you guys are going to see the, the Land Lakes high class varieties and the Decab varieties. You know, you've got a couple. Here's one hybrid now from Land Lakes. It's a late maturing variety, one of the best yielders last year. And uh, DKW 4410, it's a medium maturity variety, but it was also one of the best yielders. Those two were the best yielders from last year. Uh, one's a hybrid, one's the open pollinated. But if you want something to come off before you start harvesting wheat, especially if you're swapping, 4110 is probably one of the earliest ones, and 110 is the earliest ones. 